Hello and welcome to the One Step Ahead show by DSP Mutual Fund, where today we are going to find out the roadmap to retirement, which is often considered to be the longest vacation by many of us. In the previous show, we spoke about how can senior citizens manage their wealth after retirement? But how do we go about creating that wealth before we retire? Retirement is often considered to be a zero salary life, but not necessarily it has to be a zero income life. And we may want to pursue so many things that we couldn't do when we work full time. For instance, spending time with family and friends, going out for vacations, traveling the world, getting back to fulfill unfulfilled uh, hobbies that we want to pursue. And in order to have a secure, comfortable and enjoyable retired life, it's imperative that we build a financial cushion that will fund it all. Retirement planning is a multi-step process. We need to understand how much money we need to sustain our lifestyle and for how long. Various investment options that we can use that could help us raise the money to fund the future, um, you know, our future expenses. And of course, um, how should we how how soon we should start uh, planning for it? Um, and to help us decode the roadmap to retirement today, we have with us Mr. Shomujit Ghosh, who has been guiding investors for almost three decades with his expertise in money management. Welcome to the show, Shomujit. Thank you, Shoma. Thank you very I'm much. I'm so delighted to this. have you uh, in our show today. Um, you're lovingly called as Dada in Kolkata. You're the founder, director of Wealth App Distributors uh, Private Limited. Let me tell you a little more about uh, Mr. Shomajit Ghosh. His wealth management experience and expertise is gathered from some of the most respected names that he has worked for in the banking and financial services. He started his journey in 1996 as an investment banker and had held key positions in SBI fund management, ANZ Greenlays or Standard Chartered Bank, ABN AMRO, and Citigroup. In 2014, he started his entrepreneurial journey by setting up WealthApp Distributors, which today, by the way, is one of the fastest growing financial planning platform uh, that you find in India. He's also an integral part of uh, India Sotheby's international realty team. Shomajit Kosh is a science graduate with a master's in finance. He's a certified financial planner, and he also mentors a number of financial education institutions. Uh, so welcome once more, uh, Shomajita. Before we start the conversation, request all viewers to share the questions that you have in the comment section, and we shall get back to you at the earliest. Uh, so Shomajita, we would want to know uh, more about you and WealthApp. Uh, would you take us through your journey what motivated you to start this firm? Uh, you know, you have worked with so many bigger names earlier. Yeah, thanks, Shumana. So you have uh, you have already told uh, everyone my little bit of background. But you know, increasingly uh, at, uh, in, during my days as as a banker and uh, heading the wealth management business for my bank uh, regionally as well as I led the country uh, investment team. Uh, increasingly, I understood in those days that uh, it was difficult for a bank to actually do uh, in-depth financial planning for clients. Uh, banks uh, in those days and even today are so uh, motivated to look at their own uh, you know, short-term revenue cycles that uh, when we do wealth management or financial planning for a client, to stay with the client for a very long time uh, was uh, quite impossible for a bank uh, to do. Uh, there are three main reasons for it. One, first reason is uh, your RMs do not want to stay as RMs for very long. So you may start your journey with uh, a, a relationship manager and if he or she is really good, then he or she aspires to now manage a team after two, three years. So you will get uh, a new relationship manager, but your own as an investor, your journey is a 30 year journey. And in those 30 years, even if you keep that bank same, you will may have 20 hours. Uh, then 
Uh, the next point is your RMs may not stay with that bank if he's good. He will leave and join another bank and he, with his uh, relationship with you, would like to pull you to that, to that bank. And the new RM in his place, in, in your existing bank, will try to pull back your investments or try to keep your investments with your bank. So that's problem number two. Problem number three is the banks generally have their senior management also changing every two years and uh, inconsistency in terms of senior manage management's uh, outlook towards their long-term revenue uh, creation uh, often is a big problem. And uh, having stayed uh, in two, three banks for almost more than uh, two, almost two decades, uh, it has it had made uh, me. Uh, I could really understand that it is quite impossible for any bank to have consistency for a client who is looking for a 25, 30 years consistency of his or her money or portfolio. Now, how do you solve this problem? This is a this is a problem, and I read up a few books and uh, I understood that all developed countries, especially U.S. Uh, uh, has faced this problem in the 80s and 90s. And uh, most of the bank, good bankers in the US also form boutique financial planning firms like Wealth uh, And they are now plan catering to a, a small set of clients by trying to give them a consistency of relationship. And that is exactly what Wealth is doing. Today, Wealth uh, is almost stepping into the 10th year of our business. And we have 11 uh, experienced bankers who are part of the WealthApp team. And each one of us is now looking at uh, managing their own clients. Uh, we are based literally across India and uh, we manage our own clients with a common uh, overall vision for the company which is to be client-centric to, and to also uh, have a common path towards creating wealth over a long period of time. So we consistently avoid anything which is noisy, which is the fad of the season. And, uh, and because we document things, you, you will find that in most of the uh, banks, uh, client relationships, one thing the banks have over the period, over the last two decades, uh, they have consistently have not done is documenting clients' advice. Whatever they're telling the clients is more verbal, more uh, just leaving a product brochure, and it is not at an email or a, or a, or a documentation level which can be referred the, uh, even after four to five years. So this is what we do. Even the first client of WealthApp, the first email that we had sent to him, is uh, referred to uh, during our uh, annual review process. And that is what uh, is helping us uh, strengthen our business by the blessings of our clients. Because they have also understood after three to four years that this is exactly what uh, will help them create wealth over a long period. Absolutely. I'm sure uh, this process-oriented approach that you have taken uh, is going to actually uh, take your company to, uh, you know, have uh, bigger uh, achievements. Uh, sir, would you also tell us uh, where all you have your footprints so far in India? You, you already mentioned about the team size. Uh, what kind of investors do you all handle? What is a typical profile of investors for WellDAP? And how many investors so firstly, uh, do you manage, sir? Yeah, firstly, Pushumana, we are uh, head office in Kolkata. And... Uh, our, our entire back office operations service team is based here. Uh, me and my and a couple of our my uh, ex banking friends are based in Kolkata, and the others are based uh, literally across India. So we have presence across Bangalore, Hyderabad, uh, Bombay, Delhi, uh, Guwahati. So, uh, and these are all my old banking friends who have joined the WealthApp movement, as we say, or the WealthApp family. And they are primarily working from homes. Uh, they are managing their own set of clients. 
if God is willing, then we can also set up more branches outside Kolkata. But we are a startup in a in, in a literally bootstrap, low cost space. So we are trying to set up the process and the and the business right at this stage. Uh, and later on, we will see to add more members in our team. We may have to have active branches also in other locations. As of now, uh, our sweet spot client, as we say is a person who has uh, retired or is planning for retirement in the next 10 years. So an ideal client of WealthApp is, an, is a professional who uh, is busy with his work, is doing very well in his life, and is uh, wanting an equally equipped professional to manage his long-term retirement plan, uh, retirement life, so that he can be happy. And we... Uh, we envisage that uh, this kind of professionals generally uh, uh, has a portfolio which is around uh, one, one crore plus. Uh, so one to five crores, you can say, is the kind of client network that we have an average as. And uh, lastly, uh, we are uh, looking at clients who are astute, who understands, and sometimes we even tell them that if you leave your job and do what I'm doing, you will do a better job. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's actually our gratitude towards their professionalism. And we say that, you know, when we find a good client who is astute, we have an even longer relationship because he or she uh, generally appreciates uh, the painstaking uh, approach and the detail orientation that we bring to the table. Great. So uh, coming to our today's topic, that's on retirement. Um, how should one arrive at how much money do we uh, really need to retire? Uh, is there any specific formula to keep in mind, uh, you know, to make me feel that, uh, yes, I'm financially ready to retire? Yeah, lovely question. Uh, so oversimplifying the very complex as we say in our financial plan and planning term, retirement planning uh, is like doing a brain operation. Uh, because in generally, in general, you work for say 35 years, say 25 to 60. And the way urban Indians are living longer, uh, you can actually have another 35 years of retirement life. So in 35 years, what will happen, Shumana, is at your age of 60, if you need one lakh non-discretionary spent in the family, which is just food, shelter, expenses in an urban uh, city is one lakh. At the rate of 5% inflation, that money will double in, in about 12 years, uh, is about 14 years. Yeah. So the same one lakh will look like four, five to six lakhs when you are 80. So, so if you have retired with, say, two crores of rupees, just imagine that at your age of 80, if your monthly requirement is 55 lakhs, then in that year itself, you would require 60 lakhs. So, so that is a retirement, you know, at the face of it, uh, I keep telling my dad, who is still blessing me, uh, that in your in in your dad's time it was very easy because the life expectancy of people were was 65. They used to work till 60, they used to die at 60. Today they work till not 60, they, they want to work till 50. And they would live till 95, has made life very complex uh, for uh, retiring uh, people who are planning to retire even earlier than their normal age. It is actually doing a brain operation. So to oversimplify this brain operation, let me tell you, at any point in time, if you have 200 X in your kitty, you can get X inflation proof. So if you want one lakh per month into 200 X, you need two crores with you. Two crores will keep uh, giving you one lakh inflation proof for the rest of your life. Now you can live as long as you want. 
Uh, and, and this is a simplistic formula. Below that, please don't think of retiring. Anything above that? Uh, these are only for your discretionary spends, let me tell you. Then your party and your travel expenses and your happiness expenses have no limit. And we would love our clients to have no limit on that. So for that, it can edge a little further. But generally, 200x, if you have, your x can be made inflation-proof uh, by a good financial plan. So with that kind of numbers in mind, I'm sure our audience is going to take retirement very seriously, considering that they are going to have a good lifestyle even after retirement. Um, Shomajita, how would an ideal retirement plan look like uh, when we consider uh, top financial priorities? And what are these priorities that one should keep in mind uh, before planning for retirement? Uh, also, how much, in, in your opinion, uh, would the healthcare cost be, say, after 20 years from now? Okay. Uh, so, firstly, healthcare. Uh, I'll take a little bit later because it's really difficult to question to answer your most difficult question. Uh, so I'll take the easier questions first. So the first thing is, you know, divide your retirement, you know, post-retirement needs into two parts, non-discretionary and discretionary spends. So as we say in Hindi, dal chawal, uh, roti kapra matan expenses, uh, that you cannot compromise with these expenses. So those expenses will have to come from fixed pension kind of cash flows, where there cannot be any market linkage to that cash flow. Correct? So if uh, for an urban Indian, that cash flow is one lakh per month, say, for the family of husband and wife, so that one lakh rupees has to be invested for that one lakh cash flow, you have to invest in some instrument which can easily give him that cash flow without any uh, market volatility. So as you know, in India, there are several plans uh, rolled out by the government, uh, like Senior Citizen Saving Scheme, like PMDY. Uh, these actually provide uh, 30,000 rupees per month from SCSS in two names, 15, uh, you know, 30 lakhs you can invest with 20,000 from SCSS and 20,000 from PNBNBY will provide you the first 40,000 rupees for your family by investing, say, 60 lakhs. Then the next, you know, uh, 60,000 must come by investing in certain fixed income instruments. Uh, now you have to, the first two instruments that I spoke about are taxable in nature. So you have already added some taxable income to your portfolio. Now, anything above this, if you take fixed income and you pay tax on that, so as a retiree, you're, you will uh, go into the 20%, 30% tax bracket, which, is, uh, which must be taken very seriously. So we use mutual fund fixed income schemes to provide the next discretionary spend requirement, which also gives a little bit of softer uh, tax to the family. In the process, once the discretionary uh, spends are met by not taking much of a market linkage, the rest of the money that, the, that is left, we take a little bit of risk. So we take that part of the portfolio uh, into say good equity shares through mutual funds so that we can uh, grow that money to combat inflation uh, over a long period. And in India, inflation has remained quite stubborn over the last 20, 25 years. While we always have wished that it will follow the developed market countries curve and come down to one or 2%, uh, uh, but that has remained the wish list for Indians for quite some time. So, uh, so, so we have to keep an eye on inflation at all points in time. And if inflation remains even at 5% for the next 20, 25 years, on an average, it will be very difficult for uh, one to uh, 
to assess their long-term expenses as they grow uh, old. And now coming to medical expenses, that's the that's literally a very difficult uh, question to address because medical inflation uh, uh, is has has remained around thirteen to fourteen percent in India over the last fifteen years, and uh, it has softened a little bit post COVID. But an average inflation, which was about 14%, is just around 12 right now. So if you double money at, say, 12%, money doubles in six years. So if you have a medical uh, uh, cover, if you think at your age of 60, you have a 10 lakh cover for you and your family. That's a plota cover. And you think it's very comfortable, nice 10 lakh cover. Now, at the age of 70, uh, 10 years down the line, your need of that 10 lakh covered is two and a half times, which is 25 lakhs, just at the age of 70, at the rate of 12%. And uh, so if I keep doubling money at 12%, it will double in six years time. So you can imagine in about when he's 85, uh, so that same family, which needed a cover of 10 lakhs would be needing a cover close to one crore. And as you age, you do not get extra cover from the from the medical insurance companies. So you have to take the largest possible cover when you are fit and young and not when you are 60. So that's uh, that's like, uh, as we say, you know, uh, Shane wants uh, bowling coming at you. Difficult to play uh, and you have to really have the right uh, technique uh, to combat uh, that kind of very high level spin ball. Absolutely. I mean, those are some mind boggling figures that many of us probably don't even consider. Uh, medical expenses are definitely going to be huge uh, as we age. And with that, another very important aspect that you touched is the taxation that we probably will face with the choice of different financial instruments, even post retirement. Uh, that leads me to another very interesting question that I am asked when I take so many financial wellness sessions across different organizations. Uh, should one pay off all the loans and mortgages before retirement? Is there any tax implications or benefits to continue these loans uh, post-retirement? What's your view on that? Uh, so, well, now, as you know, for for tax paying purposes, you have two, two clear uh, paths to pay your taxes. So I think for retired people, it is better not to carry their loans, pay off their loans with the purpose and be debt free uh, and move to the tax bracket, which does not need to be, to have any, uh, you know, deductions and all that. So the newer tax bracket, where almost up to 7 lakhs of rupees per annum income, you hardly pay any tax, is the right way of treating your uh, tax income. Absolutely. So before we move on with our conversation with uh, Shomajit Ghosh, to all the audience who is listening to us, if you enjoy our content, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon to get the latest video updates from DSP Mutual Fund. Uh, so, Shomuchita, my next question to you is, uh, in your view, is there any ideal time to start planning for retirement? And uh, what would be a well-planned uh, retirement-ready portfolio? Uh, you know, how would it look like when uh, one is planning it in their late 20s or 30s or 40s? And how would that change uh, over time? Okay, uh, simply put, retirement is the, uh, is, the, is the terminal planning of your, of your entire life. Now, if you do the terminal planning well, all your needs will be taken care of during the path. So I wish uh, uh, I had people to guide me when I was 23, 24, and I could have just planted one SIP for my retirement in those times. And uh, so 
So that's the kind of value add a retirement plan can do for you. Why? Because with because in your mind, it is such a long-term investment. You actually can take the a riskier asset class. You can build it on it slowly. So I'll give you an example. So today, uh, 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 even a IT person who starts his first job, he gets about 20,000 rupees, 25,000 rupees a month. So I'm saying even 1,000 rupees, if he or she can just set aside for his or her retirement, that's just uh, you know 1,000 rupees per month. In just 15 years, when he is 40, say for example, that 1,000 rupees will create uh, a nice 10, 15 lakhs corpus for him. It is ultimately working towards uh, taking my retirement uh, life, make, making it easier. But that corpus is always being available to me. And uh, the, the best part is, you know, when you start with that thousand rupees, I can guarantee you Indians, young Indians are much smarter, much enlightened than what we were in those days. Uh, that same person will make that 1,000, 2,000 the next year. Because the moment he is able to take out 1,000 rupees from his 20,000, next year if his salary goes to 22, he or she will be able to easily take out another one. And then third year when it goes to 25, you will be taking out maybe 2,000. Because by earning 20,000, if you can take out 1,000, then at your when you are earning 25, why can't you take out a large portion of that extra 5,000 that you are getting? So when we plan with our young friends who are extremely smart, much smarter than us, they get quickly, uh, they understand this. We put that in a long-term cash flow. And just by putting 1,000 rupees incremental on your starting 1,000 SIP, just see where the corpus will be when you are 55. It's a simple map. Anyone can do that but it will cross many crores. But that start is very important. And I think uh, through your channel, I must tell you, I think it is important now for uh, it, it, this need to be addressed at a very uh, highest level. Maybe the ministry or somebody, Ministry of Finance should take it, give them some, uh, you know, some tax benefits or something, you know, some guarantee maybe. Just the first 5,000 rupees that you will put, your returns are guaranteed at 10 years. Because as you know, with SIP uh, getting a return, you know, historically we have got 17% return. Even if I get 12% return, uh, guaranteeing the first 5,000 for 10,000 for 10% is not a big deal. But that will suddenly, uh, you know, ooh, a lot of young people to start very early. And India is very young population, as you know. Almost two crore people come into the work life every year. And if two crores Indians are motivated to put in the first 5,000 rupees uh, with a minimum guarantee, because, you know, uh, just to give them a head start, the smartness with which these guys come on the table, they will automatically build a great financial future. I think that's a wonderful suggestion, uh, Shomojita. Uh, now, you mentioned that when someone's younger, especially in the, in the 20s, they have a higher risk appetite. And I'm assuming uh, when you referred SIP, you basically meant equity mutual fund SIPs. Yes. Um, yeah. What happens, uh, you know, uh, when someone moves on in their 30s and 40s? Uh, is the choice of products going to be different for these set of uh, individuals? Uh, you did mention that, you know, salaries or, you know, uh, business income might go up, uh, which would mean additional increase in SIPs. Uh, how would the, third, you know, how would those uh, individuals who are in their 30s and 40s should plan their retirement and what kind of products should uh, they choose or, or what, what kind of combination should they go for? Okay, simply put, Shumana, uh, for a salaried person today, every month the PF contribution that is going is actually going into a fixed income instrument. 
while the government is giving a good rate of interest on that, but one has to appreciate and understand that's fixed income. Okay? That's debt part of the portfolio. So any incremental savings over and above here must find its way into equities systematically. So there is no doubt, no asset allocation, no matrix that needs to uh, work them. Okay. So and then an average Indian saves 30% of his income, as we know. So if your PA, say for example, you yourself, you are salary. So uh, your 12% of your basic contribution from you and 12% from your employer makes it about 15% of your gross income will go into fixed income every month. So now if you are an average Indian and you say 30%, so the remaining 15% must find its way 100% into it. And if you can do that even for a period of three years or four years, market volatility will average out and you will get better returns than any fixed income. Uh, now, uh, any Indian or any, any, for that matter, any human being would have two large units, children's education, and retirement. Baki, you can all manage. Okay? Those are not, those are non-discretionary needs. Uh, those are, sorry, those are discretionary needs. Non-discretionary you can't play with is your children's higher education and your own retirement. Uh, for your ch children's higher education, a, ch a child's higher education will come in about 16 to, eight, to 20 years. Again, enough time horizon for equity investments. And uh, retirement will, will be coming after 30 years and will play for another 30 years. So, so a lot of money should have to be parked in equity today. Now the question will come when you have retired and you do not have a cash flow. You do not, you now have to withdraw your cash flow from the portfolio. Then you think of reducing a part of the portfolio, keep your next three years cash flow into fixed income so that market volatility does not affect you. But at your accrual uh, stages of your life, just don't get swayed by anything. Just put all your money, all, I mean all, your money into SIPs, uh, into diversified equity mutual funds. Great. And what happens if uh, retirement planning is delayed for any reason? So for instance, somebody who's supposed to start at 30s, uh, would probably start it in their late 40s. What happens then? Yeah, extremely good question. So uh, I have again a oversimplified formula. So for every five years delay, you have to double your investment. So if you start at 25, you can start with 5,000. Start at 30, make it 10. 35, you have to make it 20. 40, you have to make it 40. 45, you have to make it you know, 80,000 and like that. So that's the cost of delay uh, we have to face if you are delaying our yeah, retirement. It's actually, if you if you do the math, maths person, so I always bring in math into everything. I'm sorry for this. But if you bring in math, that five years is actually not five years, it's about seven years. But the point is, you know, is as bad as that. So, right. Uh, another interesting investment options that we keep hearing about is uh, NPS. Uh, in your opinion, uh, can NPS be a good option for retirement planning? And also, yes. uh, do annuities make sense? Uh, also, what about PF in your view, especially with EPF for now allowing higher amounts to be contributed? Uh, how would you, uh, you know, advise investors should choose these kind of instruments? Okay, good, very good question, Jonah. So thank you, Ken. So uh, firstly, NPS is a wonderful product. Uh, and it's literally a zero cost product, extremely well structured by the government of India. And uh, especially for salary people, uh, there is a double benefit of NPS, which uh, most of us don't understand. Uh, a salary person where the employer is giving the benefit of deducting NPS, which is voluntary, but if the employer gives you the benefit of deducting your NPS, you actually can give 10% of your basic every year to NPS, which is deducted at source before your salary is paid. 
Okay, so it is not taxed. And additionally, you can put another incremental money into NPS from your post tax salary up to units. It's like pretty much like EPF and PPF. EPF is done at a employer level, and PPF is what you contribute after you have received your salary. So if you're a salary person, NPS uh, not only helps you systematically save uh, a lot of money every month, it also gives you fantastic stack bonus. And NPS is a market-linked instrument. So underline, you can choose your fund managers, which mutual funds you would like uh, to manage your money. Uh, and there is an auto mode, and there is a uh, mode at, uh, which you can control. So if you give auto mode, according to your age, the asset allocation will reduce, the equity part of the asset will reduce. But if you take a self-chosen mode, you can have a consistently higher equity allocation for during the accumulation phase. So on an average, uh, NPS uh, now uh, over the last 15 years has given about nine to ten percent return, uh, uh, which is which is extremely good, which is higher than uh, the corresponding fantastic instrument, which is PF. Uh, so PF, as you know. Uh, government of India provides extra returns because it is meant for employees uh, or, uh, you know, retirement benefits. Now, in PF, there are caps that has been introduced because people were taking undue advantage of that extra higher return. So now, uh, incremental contribution to PF through voluntary provident fund schemes or Provident fund, uh, the public provident fund has become uh, a little tax inefficient. Uh, so, an ideal uh, asset allocation for your savings can be a first PF employee plus employer, keep it to that. Don't increase it unnecessarily. Definitely, number two is NPS. Contribute uh, maximum that you can in NPS. Uh, if your employer does not have the benefit of NPS, then talk to your HR and tell them uh, to uh, give you that benefit. Uh, and thirdly, any incremental money over and above these two should go into a diversified equity uh, mutual fund through systematic SIP group. And there are certain solution funds like children benefit fund, like retirement funds. Uh, so if you can do it, start an SIP in four funds, so four schemes, at least take one of the, them into a solution fund. If you have a small kid, try to take a children fund. If you are wanting to put it specifically for your retirement, put it in one retirement fund. They, they are not different animals. They don't give you extraordinary high returns, but just in your portfolio, when you see that presence of the children fund or the retirement fund, it tends to keep you uh, invested for a little longer. As you know, that the biggest worry uh, and the biggest problem for Indian investors has been to stay with the investment for long. So while equity markets have consistently given more than 15 to 20 percent, around 15 percent return for the last 30 years, an average Indian, if you ask, they will say my real estate is better than equity. Because in a real estate, they buy to stay invested. And when they stay invested, they get 9-10% return, which is higher than any fixed income. So they say it's a fantastic return. Same is happening to gold. When you have gold in the family, you don't sell. And when you hold gold, you are seeing you are making 10% return. But equity, if you are bought and held, you would have made 17% return. But unfortunately, you don't do, do that for every every alternate quarter, there will be some bad news and you tend to exit the market. Uh, so that time, that name retirement and that name uh, solution in that fund scheme will help you stay a little bit more, a little longer. Great. I think that's quite a tip that uh, today's millennials should, uh, should take.
So between NPS, equity fund SIPs or PFs, Shomojinda, in your opinion, uh, what should be the preferred retirement product for a millennial today? So as I said, Shona, uh, PF will come uh, even if you don't want it. If you are salaried, it will come to you. Uh, but if you are a professional, then uh, it is better for you to start with NPS instead of a PPM. And uh, so the first need can be covered through NPS and uh, NPS has a cap uh, for up to that amount only it gives you tax benefit. Voluntarily, you can invest more, but because NPS uh, has a cap, uh, keep that NPS amount up to that cap. Anything incremental, move into equity assignments. Great. So now we understand what kind of products we should choose for ourselves to plan this such an important goal. Uh, coming to the point of spending. How much should uh, one earmark for regular spending from their retirement corpus? Uh, is there any specific formula based on lifestyle, Shomojita, that you would uh, you know, highlight? Well, uh, I really don't have a formula for this. Uh, however, uh, I think, you know, as, uh, you know, personally, I was uh, very keen on uh, being diligent about my own savings at the very beginning of my life. And that helped me take my entrepreneur decision uh, at the age of 35. I could only execute it at 42, but um, I thought that I would retire at 40 and start something. Things got delayed by two years, but nevertheless, I'm saying that, uh, you know, if you keep your financial prudence, I think that's where the government of India, as well as all good institutions like yours, is trying every day to inculcate financial literacy amongst Indians. And unfortunately, it is not being taught in the highest level of education that Indians are getting. Even in an IM uh, program, financial literacy is unfortunately not taught explicitly. So, when that same person suddenly gets into starting to earn, uh, you know, out of an iron nowadays, people get I hear 25 lakhs starting salary. So the moment that young boy will get 25 lakhs, uh, he will all, he or she will all automatically uh, start spending more. So that financial prudence uh, at an early age, I believe should be implanted uh, at a graduation level through easy programs. Uh, now, nowadays, all kids are very savvy online. So they can, uh, we, we must have to inculcate uh, online programs at a graduation level so that people can at least read up, uh, sit for an online test and that can come as an extra in, uh, marks to their overall graduation marks. And sort of then they come on to the entire. So as I said, about two or two to three crore people, boys and girls every year are coming into you know, the earning side of the, uh, of the population. So, and that's huge. That's like, you know, uh, that's two, two percent of our population is starting to earn every year. So if we can sort of catch them at that age and help two crore, a little bit more financially literate people come onto the work life. In about five years time, I think um, my, our all our jobs will be much, uh, much simpler, easier, and we can focus on really the more important items, which is to create extra return for our clients. Today, we're actually focusing a lot of our energies in giving basic financial education or financial literacy to, to, uh, to clients because of the absence of basic uh, and you know absolutely preliminary financial education. Right. Uh, what's your opinion about insurance retirement plans, uh, Shomujita? What about endowment plans? Uh, should one consider these or avoid these? Well, uh, so 
at the case of it, insurance uh, is a very important part of your financial portfolio. But it is uh, it is supposed to take care of you the risk part of the portfolio. Uh, it is not to take care of the return part. Of it. So uh, the importance of this, I can tell you, simply words, simple words. A little girl is born in your family, and the father decides that the girl should have one crore when she uh, aspires to become a doctor. So father's dream, so father now starts a SIP of say 12,000 rupees per month, 12,000 rupees per month in 18 years at the rate of about 12% will become one. But he forgets to take insurance and he unfortunately dies or becomes disabled in a couple of years time. What will happen? He, he has now saved just about five, six lakhs, which at the best possible interest rates also uh, will not make even one fifth the money uh, in when the daughter is now 18. Most importantly, at that time, the family would need their money to survive. And will the will that medical uh, program will go out the window. So insurance at that point is more important than the SIP for the father to have. First, he should buy that one crore life insurance term plan, which will cost him just what 30,000 rupees for a one crore term plan. So which is what? 2,000 rupees per month. So that is his first need. So accordingly, that 12,000 rupees may, he can do 2,000 rupees for that term plan, which is an expense, and the incremental 10,000 rupees in the savings. Next year, he will try to see with his incremental salary if he can make it higher. However, when it comes to retirement, uh, insurance has actually no role to play <laughs> because you live longer. So uh, if you die, there's no need of retirement, right? So in retirement planning, honestly, there is no role uh, insurance companies or insurance policies will have any role. Uh, so what insurance companies generally do is they work on the pension side of the, and in absence of a very robust, well knit pension program in India, uh, insurance companies provide pension plans for retirees, and they focus on the fixed in pension part of the portfolio. So as I said, uh, when you have retired, the first part of your pension First part of your dis, uh, discretionary, uh, non discretionary spends, roti kapra makan, should come from a pension kind of a program. There cannot be any market linkage. Now, for that program, uh, if you think you need one lakh, let that first 50, 60,000 may come from SCSS, PMBBY. Rest of it can also come from a in pension available from an insurance company, not an insurance policy. Please understand, these are not insurance policies. These are pension plans given by insurance companies. And that much you need in your portfolio. Don't go to a market link plan of an insurance company promising you that I will make uh, returns for you. That's where people will get trapped. Uh, for returns, come to companies which are made to give you returns, made to manage your investments like mutual funds. So, so similar group companies like today, SBI has a mutual fund. SBI also has an insurance company. SBI also is a bank. So you can always go to uh, SBI insurance for your term plan and for your fixed pension need for growth of your capital, management of your investment, come to SBI mutual fund. That's the way one should look at it. Great. Um, how does Wealthap evaluate retirement planning for their investments? And uh, what processes do you follow when uh, suggesting funds for your clients? Yeah. So as I said, uh, doing retirement planning for our clients is like doing brain operation. So just like uh, the operation of the brain may take six hours, but the preparation to the operation takes maybe 
30 days. So for our clients, we have a six stage process that we follow, uh, which is basically first step is gathering information. So we even ask our clients, uh, you know, their, if their parents are alive, uh, how much money will we, they may inherit from their parents, is the, what kind of uh, assets or liability they will inherit, is that properly nominated so that there is no problem with two inheritance, two asking them how many kids do they have, what kind of liability they have. Uh, you know, in fact, we have to even ask whether unfortunate early deaths have happened in the family. Because you know, some of the early deaths lead to generational uh, you know, diseases. So we even go into that level of depth to understand how long do we expect uh, this client or his family or his wife to live. So when we find that a client is, is talking to us and he's say, 60, but his father is still alive. Mother is also alive. Then there's a lot of probability for this person to also live longer because his family has a, has a history of uh, living longer. So we have to plan accordingly. And if we see that the same person, another person, the father died out of cancer, say for example, at the age of 55, then we have to tell him, sir, please take a larger medical cover because you may have the propensity of having cancer in your, uh, in, for you also. So like that, the initial gathering of information leads to giving our proposal to the client. And as I said, we keep it documented. Whatever we receive from the client, whatever we assimilate, and whatever we take, give him is all documented so that he has a complete sheets of a spreadsheet, which has five, six sheets, which tells us basic information, his current investments, his cash flow requirements. We even measure elasticity of his portfolio. By elasticity, I mean that how much of money he will have extra above his fixed, you know, non discretionary spends. We even sometimes uh, tell our clients that, sir, high time to now upgrade yourself to business class because you can afford it. So that's the kind of uh, in-depth financial planning would take almost three to four seatings. And then only we get to the product level. Uh, so product last, planning first. So. And then uh, once the client actually understands the kind of process and the painstaking uh, steps that we have taken, he or she actually uh, gets convinced that yes, this is the uh, right team to sit behind us for the rest of our retirement life. Uh, till the such time, we do not even talk products with our clients, leave apart taking their checks. So, so then we sort of, uh, you know, uh, get into again, a very clear understanding of a review process. Because as you know, people's attention to their retirement corpus is the highest, especially when they have retired. And it will be at its very highest, highest in the first one or two years. So in the first initial one or two years, we even uh, agree to a quarterly review to report. But then over a period, uh, we settle at an annual review. Uh, at a minimum once a year review is a must uh, for every client. Great. Uh, great to hear about such a robust framework that you all follow uh, to actually uh, you know, in you know, uh, suggest to your clients what kind of products or what kind of approach they need to have uh, towards retirement. Uh, Shomachita, you did mention about uh, this, uh, this you know, this trend that people these days uh, want to retire early, and we also often hear about this movement, uh, fire or financial independence, retire early movement. Uh, do you agree with this thinking, or do you feel it's a trap millennials fall? 
for because of uh, so much of social media hypes and you know this uh, i want to sound cool uh, to the world uh, what's your opinion on that well I, i'm sorry but uh, i am seeing my own daughter go in front of my eyes and i have an extra fascination and extra uh, belief in in the generation i think they are lot smarter uh, so what they are actually uh, trying to do is they are trying to make themselves financially uh, free at at the fastest possible time uh, and they are not going to sit tight after that they are going to then conquer the world but they want to keep that financial uh, unhappiness out of the way so with especially urban indians with the economic you know superdens uh, that indians have seen at the senior middle class indians the bulging middle class i think uh, thankfully most young kids uh, do not really find much uh, financial stress because they are you know their families they are born with acs in their rooms you know <laughs> not not too many of us had the benefit even when we were 25 so they were born in acs they 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 go to schools in their own they went to schools in their own cars so they their parents did not say that you know study otherwise you will become a you know bhel puri wala so that's a different generation you know uh, and i think they do not have much of that you know roti kapda makan stress in their lives and that's why they are keeping uh, that at the back of their mind but they want to conquer that simpler problem faster and then they are you know uh, ready to grow uh, for the next level which is to uh, which is to really conquer the world so i think you know uh, personally i would be biased towards my uh, my son daughter's generation and uh, i want to really wish them Uh, all my very best so right. whatever they are doing let them do absolutely uh, what would be your final words of advice for those who are worried about retirement or not uh, especially uh, since our profile of viewers are mostly in their late 20s or early 30s uh, some of the key takeaways that you would want to highlight well uh, come to us is a very another simpler answer we are only present we are there just phone call or whatsapp or uh, but you know i think three things uh, that uh, i want to leave one uh, do not take uh, product advice anyone and everyone coming and telling you ye khareed lo aur wo khareed lo ye stock le lo ye crypto mein dal do ye karo wo karo avoid product advice. to have a plan for your own finances before you get into the product so you would know uh, if i save so much what will that become after 50 years the moment you have that plan in place let me guarantee you you will automatically be working towards making it much better so avoid product advice make a plan and third most important you ensure yourself before you think of investing ensure and not buy uh, investment products <laughs> from insurance companies that is the biggest i think in the last 20 years at least that has been the biggest menace in in financial services uh, promotion of financial services i think we must india is a very under insured country so especially you know sometimes i'm just taking a moment more but you know for people who are not married say for example they think that you know what insurance would i need i'm not married i don't have kids so at least go and buy yourself a disabled disablement plan okay absolutely uh shomajit thanks so much for joining us today and sharing your valuable insights on how one should plan their retirement goals uh, to all our viewers here if you need help selecting the right investment solutions leave a comment behind on the youtube stream and we will contact you asap 
Most experts like Shomajit Kosh uh, would identify the importance of the right uh, investment products, asset allocation uh, needed to be done to get the, to the goals. And I think it's equally important that uh, we need to evaluate our risk appetite and risk score also along with it. Um, we highly recommend to visit our website, dspim.com, and use the personalized recommendation tool called Sarthi. It's a complimentary tool for anyone, whether you are an investor or not. And it will just take you five minutes to go through the questions and know yourself better and your risk score as well. Uh, I'm going to leave the link uh, in, the, in the YouTube description for your reference. Uh, I really hope you find out some time to check it out and use it. Uh, happy investing to all of you. Thanks, Shomajidda, once again. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.